Whoop, gotta watch out for my child allowance here. But as with any restoration of an old building, you always run into unexpected situations. Those two big beams that we have here are in very good condition. However, while I was placing the outriggers, I noticed that in certain areas, the wood isn't all that good anymore. The outside seems to be suffering from uh, rot. In fact, dry rot, because it's no longer rotting. There must have been a leak many, many years ago, and now these beams are not as strong anymore as they used to be. I could take all the rot off, but I'm not gonna do this uh, because it damages the beam too much. Now, I don't know how far this weakness is inside the beam. Uh, you see here already a bracket that I placed on going between a solid piece and another solid piece of the same beam and then holding it in place. Now, I only did this in trim. This is not gonna stay because it looks ugly. And in fact, support for a beam or strength for a beam is not horizontal, but it's always in the vertical and the height. So now to strengthen that one spot of the old beams, I'm going to place a beam from the left to the right, as I said before. Now I have options. I can place it under the ceiling, but that's gonna look a bit ugly. So I'm gonna place it above the ceiling so nobody can see it. And that support beam, although it is in segments, can consist out of steel, the I or the H profiles. I can use wood for that, and I might decide to use Douglas uh, pine. The only problem I'm having is that the maximum section that I can stick through the ceiling is only 3.6 meters, because otherwise I can't maneuver on the attic because of the roof. And I might decide to use Douglas uh, pine, or you can even use laminated wood. Now, it all differs from how much load you want to place on it and how much load that particular material can carry. Now, there's ample of calculators on the internet where you can calculate loads and equal spread loads and point loads over a specific span. Now, my span is 5.5 meters, so I will need at least two segments to put together. So, I thought about steel, but then I need two pieces of steel, an H or an I profile, and I will have to weld the flange on one side and then bolt it together. A bit of a weaker spot, but that will work because that's quite common practice. That's an option. Uh, the other option was to use wood or laminated wood. I'm not gonna go for laminated wood. Et voila, this is the wood we're going to use. Douglas pine, ideal for construction work. And as you can see, the width is 225 millimeters. So that's the widest you can get them. The thickness is around 75 mil. And that's the way we're going to build it. Two beams for one span, two on the other side, and then one middle beam. And then we're going to place bolts straight through this wood, right in the middle, at regular distances. So this is held together very well. And we'll also fill up these gaps here with the residue, the leftover of the beams, because the total length of this beam is a little bit too long. And then the brackets, as I've shown you before. They will come over here, with two rods going down to hold the old beam. If I'm going to install a support beam, I always wonder if it's gonna be strong enough. Uh, I know there's lots of calculators on the internet and I've used them and I know based on those calculations that the beams will be strong enough, but still, you know, I'm kind of a guy that doesn't trust it and I'd rather be saved than sorry. Now, I don't want to overdimension either and I don't want certainly not to underdimension. So, um, I want to do a test. So I'm going to lower some weight onto this beam. I have it supported on two bricks which are reflecting the wall. And uh, the total weight is around 300 kilograms of the stuff that I put up. And then the forklift itself, I'm going to let it down and let it float. Now the forks and the back end here is about 200 kilograms as well. So all by all, I'm running it up at around 550, 600 kilograms. Uh, so that should be a good test. I wonder what this beam will do. So um, I'm going to move the camera so you can see it a bit better. Keep an eye on the beam because I think it's going to bend a bit at least. So the forklift will be free floating and the whole chariot will rest on the beam. There we go. You see the forklift actually lifting up a bit. Now it is in full free float.
Now that seems to be holding it pretty good. I'm not going to put my fingers under it, but let me have a look eyesight wise how that is. Well, I think the beam didn't bend a bit, maybe just a fraction. So that's not bad. So I probably can add a little bit more weight to it. There we go. And even move around on it. And that's pretty good. And you can see actually the forklift, the whole chariot is in free play. I was able to put at least 600 kilograms on it and it still didn't move a bit. So I'm quite happy because that's about the extra weight I want to support with this beam. And in essence, I'm gonna have like three beams like this all bolted together. So that will make it even more stronger. I know it's not gonna be three times a single beam. It probably is gonna be two times uh, a beam. And I will do this actually two times on the ceiling. So all by all, this will be uh, very strong. And I'm now assured that this will hold and I'm happy. I now need to drill a 40 millimeter hole in these metal plates. Now to do that, I'm going to use a magnetic drill. So this is nothing more than a, a foot of a drill, which is magnetic with an electromagnet and it locks down the metal plate. Very handy for this kind of work. I marked where I want to drill, making sure everything is in the right place. It is. I'm going to turn on the magnet and now it's going to lock that in place. It's not going to move. And now I can basically drill. Guys, uh, what I wanted to show you is that when you saw these little movements, it was not the drill moving towards the metal plate, it's actually the whole thing that moves a bit, okay? I probably should have locked that down, but I didn't. Okay, but here is the hole, and that looks uh, quite all right and very handy. I will unlock the magnet, there we go, and now I can actually remove it. That's how it works. And once I have all the holes cut, I will actually put a threaded rod through it, and then put a bolt up, and this is how we're going to hold up that old oak beam. I'm going to use these threaded rods. Now you could use long bolts, but it's going to be very hard to find them. And these threaded rods are very, very useful for that. Uh, the ones I have are one meter long, and it's an M14. But I need to cut them, uh, because my beams are only 25 uh, centimeters thick. So I need to cut them to length. Now you can grind them off, you can use a hacksaw, whatever you want. I'm using a hacksaw, but it's an electrical one, but I'm always cutting it on a small angle because that makes it easier later to put the nut on. So let's cut the beam to the right length. I already have a stop on this side, so I don't need to measure every time. I'll lock it in place and then we can actually cut it. And I've actually adjusted the saw to about a de three degrees, so it's not cutting straight. It's a bit offset. So let me put the nut on and see how easy that goes. Now, of course, I'm standing on the side, not to be in the way of the camera, but you know, you can see that goes easy. If you try to do this with a hacksaw in a straight angle or with a grinder, it's gonna be a bit more tough initially to get that nut on and you will have to clean up the top of the bar. Now you don't have to if you cut it on a slight angle. And that's how it will look like at the bottom side of the old oak beam to support it like so. Now I'm going to continue to drill all the holes in these metal plates and I have about 32 holes to drill so that's quite a bit. And then of course I will need to cut the threaded rods to length as you've seen and then we are ready to continue. I'm not going to bother you with all that drilling. You've seen how I'm going to do it. And next you will see me drilling holes through the wood, uh, holding these beams together. I will mark them all and then I'll take them upstairs to the attic uh, and then we'll install them. And then you'll see how I'm going actually to suspend that old oak beam and remove that old bracket that I have on there, which is so ugly. But before all that, I will have to get changed because if my girlfriend sees me in my best outfit or 
not really my best outfit, but then my clean outfit, so he's not gonna be too happy about it. Two beams together are a bit too wide, so I need to cut off about 45 centimeters so I can actually fit them on top of the walls. So that's the first thing we're going to do, and then we bolt them together. These are pretty healthy beams uh, to carry. Let's check the total length. They should all be the same. Yep. And as they're all the same, I can actually use the piece that I cut off before. There's my template. And that should be about it. Oh, this doesn't have to be 100% precise, but still. Okay, it's marked, so now let's cut it. All right, so we've cut the four beams to length. Now it's time to put it all together. Just assembling all the beams together now so we can bolt them before uh, we take it upstairs. I'm having all the beams lined up uh, as good as I could and now we're going to connect them together. I'm going to put some spanners up before I start drilling so that way they're not going to move and my holes will remain aligned and I will mark them. And spider webs, I got them all over. This is how the beam will look like. It's pretty white. I think it's going to be very solid. I have it locked with the spanners, so now I'm going to drill the holes to put the bolts in. Um, initially, I said I would drill the holes all right in the middle of the beams, but I'm not going to do this. Um, I'm going to offset a bit, a bit higher in the middle and a bit lower. So kind of a V uh, arrangement. I think that's going to be um, stronger. To drill the holes through the wood beams, I'm going to use a wood bit, which is fairly long. And the tip is a bit special, as you can see. It's kind of a screw all the way in the front that pulls in that bit into the wood. I'm going to try to drill it as straight as I can. And you can see this is going in very smoothly. Everything is very tight fit. So here we go. This is the rod, right? So here we go. Um, it's supposed to be that tight because otherwise we have too much play and I don't want to have no play on these connections. Now before I move the beams upstairs, I will have to put some markers up so I know exactly which beam goes together with what beam because the holes are now lined up. And otherwise I won't figure that out. So. I'm going to start marking them. So this is left front, this is left rear, and this is left middle. And I'm going to draw a line so I know how they need to line up. I got finally all the beams in the attic and I placed the first two in the back. And now we'll have to make sure that they are coming up to the right level. So I need to space them up a bit. And then we're going to start bolting them together. I don't worry too much about the exact place because I can shift them around. So let's see how much we need to lift here. It isn't that much, so maybe that might just do the trick. Yeah, I think this is about right. <clears throat> That's probably a bit too much now. That's too much. I'm going to take... Uh, the other one from the back. All right, a bit more. And a bit more. That's about right, I think. Okay. 
Now we'll see when um, we put the front beam up how close everything will be. Uh, let's see how we numbered this guy. These guys are really heavy. Yeah? Okay, a little bit more to go. Not much. All right. We are the holes. I have markers on the beam, so I can align them. It's too far. Yeah, that's about it. So I think I have aligned the beams fairly all right. So I'm going to try to see how good they are aligned. And that looks to be all right. I'm using a little bit of a smaller bar here just to feed it through, but that looks good. So now I'm gonna place the front beam and try to align it as well, and then we're gonna put the first bolt through. Here is the beam. Now we need to lift it a bit. All right. Okay, so let's see how well it's lined up. I have the line right here. So I just need to try to get it lined up and that looks all right. So let's see if I can get the bar through the hole now. Now how far am I off? So let me put some spacers in the back. This one, it makes a difference. I'll probably need two, and I might need some more. That should be a bit better, see? Now I can move it in and out. I'm slightly tap it in. I should be hitting the last one. And the last one needs to move a bit. Now, once you have one bolt in, the others will be easier. And it's in. Now I can put the nut on the other side and try to tighten it together. At least we got one in. I have the beam finally in place and I've placed all the treader rods through the beams and I bolted it down. So now I'm going to drill a few more holes uh, to put some additional bolts uh, or threaded rods through the beams and fill up the end gaps. So now I'm going to fill up the gaps here um, with some small beams. I'm going to try to get it in. I might have to loosen up the nuts a bit. They might be a bit tight, but maybe I can just get it in. And that just goes in very smoothly. Now I'm going to hold it together with a spanner, and then I'm going to drill a few holes and put bolts through it. So let me squeeze it together so it doesn't move. There we go. All right, so now let's put two bolts through it. And now it's time to get the bolt in sight. There we go. 
and we place the nut on the other side and then we can tighten it up. And now I can retighten this one. And now it's time to add the additional bolts which are going to be offset. One a bit more to the upper part and the other one a bit more to the lower side of the beam. So that way I'm getting this kind of a V um, arrangement as I explained downstairs. And I will continue with the remaining bolts and then we're going to put the bracket up. I'm not going to show you all the bolts guys, it's always the same drilling, hammering and bolting it down. The beam is secured and now I'm going to mount the brackets and these are these heavy metal brackets and you see I have two holes in it and I'm going to put the rods through that and then in the bottom I'm going to have another bracket crossing the beam. So let me uh, remove some of that. So I can take, oops, that one down. I've been dropping a lot of things re recently. All right, so let's stick it in here. All right, that's one. And then we do the other one. And this is how we're gonna do it. Is something that drops, huh? But I gotta go to, I have to go down anyway, so it doesn't really matter. And now I'm going downstairs uh, to mount the bracket underneath this oak beam. I think this would be more than strong enough uh, to hold up these beams. Um, I think this system uh, is going to hold up or enforce the old oak beams very well. So now I'm going downstairs and put the counter plates underneath the oak beam. What you need to do now is to tighten the bolts and the whole structure is connected together. Let's see, yep. I'm not going to over tighten it because the wood will still settle and then I'm going to uh, wrap it up afterwards. So uh, I think this is uh, pretty strong. It would have been nice if I could have moved it a bit more that way, but I have a beam in the way, so I, I can't do that. But then again, the bars are really thick, so I don't worry too much about it. So we've come to the end of this video and it took a bit longer than I expected. I wanted to blast the beams, but that's not gonna happen anymore today because it's already six o'clock in the evening. Uh, bringing this beam up here was a lot of work. Uh, it was a lot of maneuvering. You haven't seen me dragging all this all the way up, but it was painful to do it on my own. But now it's in place and it is rock solid. Um, I'm also happy that the supports are working very well and the old oak beams are now very well supported uh, or suspended or enforced, whatever you want to call it. Uh, they were not that bad. They, they, there was a bit of rot on it, old rot, dry rot. I mean, this is rot that happened a long time ago. I think they had some water coming in at some moment in time. But then again, you never know how deep that is. So I didn't want to take any chances. So that's why I wanted to do this. Maybe not necessary, but for my own peace of mind, it was necessary. 
So in the next video, we are finally going to start blasting the ceiling. So I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Well, I didn't really enjoy this work, but okay. And I'll see you in my next video, guys. And please, make any comments if you want. I always like to hear your comments. Uh, by the way, um, Old Trusty is going to be back very soon uh, because I got the crankshaft back meanwhile. So that's a good point because I know a lot of you are waiting for Old Trusty for me to finish up that engine. That's going to come soon. All right. So I'm going to get a shower and a nice dinner. I'll see you guys later. Whoop, gotta watch out for my child allowance here.